Open your Bible today to Isaiah chapter 33 as we work our way through the prophet Isaiah. I trust that these uh, brief meditations, these brief uh, expositions on the prophet are helpful to some out there. Um, and I emphasize brief. Um, I just want to give basically a little synopsis or overview of each chapter. Uh, can't go into all the details of, of every chapter, but just to give you a little uh, clue or a little key as to the meaning of each chapter to help you have an overall understanding of the of the book of Isaiah, of the prophet Isaiah. So today we're looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 33, and it's a prophecy uh, concerning the future of Israel. It opens with uh, words concerning uh, one of Israel's uh, end times enemies. It says, Woe to you, O destroyer! While you were not destroyed, and he who is treacherous, while uh, treacherous, while others did not deal treacherously with him, it's describing this enemy of Israel called the the destroyer. As soon as you finish destroying, you will be destroyed. As soon as you cease to deal treacherously, others will deal treacherously with you. And so we get this in verse one: this uh, enemy, this future enemy. It may be based on the enemy that Israel faced at the time of the writing of this prophecy, which was Assyria. William Kelly uh, says that this is speaking of Gog. And we read about Gog in uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, verse 8 to 13, approximately. And, um, and Gog, we believe, is actually uh, Russia. And Russia will have an end times role in the um, attack against uh, Israel at the coming of Christ. Uh, Israel uh, will be attacked by the ancient enemy from the east and the north, what we call the Assyrian, that whole area of the world, uh, which is today Iran, Iraq, Syria, um, and even Turkey, and perhaps northern Lebanon, that whole arc there, uh, the, known as the king of the north, the Assyrian, and Gog will be the power behind them. So we see these things developing even our own day, although we don't want to read every headline into, into the prophecy. But this enemy we see in Ezekiel chapter 38 will be destroyed on the mountains of Israel. And uh, basically this is what we get in the prophecy as we, we continue on uh, in it. Um, and then we see in verse 6, And he that is the Lord, will be the stability of your times. So during this great tribulation uh, for the Jewish remnant, the godly ones amongst them, because the church will already have been raptured into heaven, God will be dealing with his people on the earth, and there will be a godly remnant among, a minority amongst the people of Israel who will have faith in the Lord Jesus. Uh, it says that... Um, he will be the stability of your times. In the midst of great tribulation and great trial, uh, the Lord uh, will be their uh, stability. Verse 6 goes on to say, A wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Um, well, uh, this is true for us today, too. The Lord is our wisdom. He is our treasure. All the treasures of God and the wisdom of God are, are, uh, are in him. We get that in Colossians. Uh, Paul reveals this to us in Colossians, that all the treasures of the knowledge of God are in Christ. Uh, then we go on in the prophecy. We can't look at all the details. Uh, we see in verse 10 to 12 where we get the destruction of Israel's enemies. It says, Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now I will be lifted up. You have uh, conceived chaff, and you will give birth to stubble. My breath will consume you like fire. The people's when it says peoples plural, it's not referring to Israel and the prophets. It's referring to, to, the, to the Gentile nations, to the nations round about Israel. The peoples will be burned to lime uh, like cut thorns which are burned in the fire. And we have this imagery also in the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew 13 where it says the Lord will send forth his angels and they'll gather the tares up in the bundles and and cast them into the fire and be burned in the fire. So it's the judgment of the living nations at the return of Christ and the enemies that surround them and so on. Again, I'm being very brief uh, with, these, uh, uh, with this prophecy. I'm skipping over a lot. Um, but I want to just back up to verse 5 
uh, again, um, where it says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness, and he will be the stability of our times. Okay, uh, that's a word for the Jewish remnant, but it's also looking forward to when the troubles were over. Now, we drop back down uh, to uh, verse 13. Now there's a word to the apostates amongst the people of Israel. And it says uh, in verse 14, the sinners in Zion are terrified. A trembling has seized the godless. So the sinners in Zion, that is the sinners amongst God's people on earth are terrified uh, or are afraid. Um, the majority actually in Israel will be apostate. We Understand this, of course, from Daniel, uh, chapter 9, which says the many will make a league, a league uh, with the beast uh, through the false prophet. Uh, many will be caught up in that, but there will be a remnant amongst them that are godly. And, of course, this is who the prophecy is written to, that they will take encouragement, uh, that the Lord had foretold these things. And, of course, we can, by application, uh, take these things uh, for ourselves as believers in, in our own times uh, the sinners in Zion are terrified that there is a great professing company uh, of Christians uh, on planet earth uh, they've been baptized or confirmed they're church members you know so outwardly they're Christian the apostle Paul spoke of that he said that in the last days there will be those who have the form of godliness but they deny the power of it and so it's the same, that when the rapture of the church happens, when the believers are taken up, uh, the sinners in Zion uh, will be terrified. It says in verse 14 at the end, Who among us can live with the consuming fire? Who among us can live with the continual burning? You know, it says in Hebrews that our God uh, is a consuming fire. And so we quickly now drop down and we'll see in verses 17 to the end, verses 17 to 24, we get the millennial blessing of Israel after the Lord has returned, uh, after he uh, destroys their enemies and the nations that had gathered against them. Uh, he will uh, bring blessing first to Israel, and then it will extend out into all the world. All the nations will be blessed. All the nations will be blessed. God promised that to Abraham, that the nations will be blessed through this, his seed, through the people of Israel, through his uh, earthly people, Israel. All the nations will be blessed. Now, we, as sort of a, a remnant before that day, the believer, the church, we have been blessed as Gentile nations. So it's, it's true for us as well. But this prophecy, the scope of this prophecy is greater than our own era. In fact, our era, the church era, the church as the body of Christ is not seen in the prophets at all. It's not seen or spoken of uh, by Isaiah at all. Uh, this is what Paul says uh, several times in Ephesians chapter 3, that these things were hid in God, not revealed in former times, but now revealed to him and the other apostles. So we get in verse 17. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. Uh, they will behold a far distant land. Your eyes will see the king in, the be in his beauty. The, the, the uh, people of Israel, the believer believing remnant, they will see the king in his beauty, they will behold his face. You know, by faith now, we see the Lord Jesus crowned with glory and honor. And as we behold his glory, as we're occupied with him, we're transformed from glory to glory. Paul says this in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, and also Hebrews chapter 2, I quoted. Uh, and we will see him face to face when we're uh, taken up in the rapture. We will behold his face. And it says in Revelation that, the names will behold his face, and the names, uh, and our names, the new name will be written uh, on our forehead, and we'll behold him, and we'll see him. But this particular prophecy here in verse 17 is, is to the people of Israel. Uh, Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. And, and it goes on uh, through the prophecy. We can't take the time uh, to, to look at, at all the details. But notice uh, uh, what he says about Jerusalem. In verse 20. Now we don't want to spiritualize these prophecies. We want to understand them first and foremost literally before we make any spiritual application to ourselves. Verse 20 says, Look upon Zion, 
uh, the city of our appointed feasts. This is not the church. This is Zion. This is Jerusalem. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, an undisturbed habitation, a tent which will not be folded up. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its cords torn apart. So uh, this prophecy is saying that uh, the city of Jerusalem will never again uh, face destruction, never again face desolation, never again be attacked and, and torn up. Uh, so uh, by this we know that the prophecy is looking at something far beyond ourselves because much later, after this prophecy had been written, Israel was torn up. They were taken to Babylon for 70 years and came back. And then it was torn up again. The pegs were pulled up again of this tent, Jerusalem. In AD 69-70, when the Romans came and scattered the Jewish people of all nations, and there they were for uh, some 2,000 years, and now they're back. Jerusalem is now back, and the people of Israel are, are dwelling there. And so this prophecy is yet looking at a future time. Let's just read it again. Uh, verse 20, he says, It will be a tent which will not be folded. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its cords torn apart. Now, this is exactly what uh, the Lord Jesus said, you know, when he uh, wept over the city of Jerusalem. We read about this in um, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter uh, 23, and verse 37. The Lord says, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to her, how often I would uh, gather your children together the way, in the way that the hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Now here, listen to this, verse 38. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. So your house is left unto you desolate. That is the temple, you know, the temple system in Jerusalem will be desolated. And the Romans did that uh, some 40 years after Christ's ascension to heaven. Now verse 39. For I say unto you, from now on you will not see me, notice this, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is you, that is the people of Israel. That the desolation of Jerusalem is only for a period of time. Otherwise the Lord wouldn't have said until. If the desolation had been permanent, he would have said that. But he says, it's just until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's a quotation from Psalm 118. When they recognize him and confess him to be Messiah, then Jerusalem will be restored and established the kingdom will be established in the earth, the millennial kingdom, and the Lord Jesus will be the king. He will reign over all of that. Uh, and, and then Jerusalem will never be plucked up or scattered again. And this is what Isaiah is saying here. There's no other fulfillment. We, can't, we can look down through history. We can't see in any way how this verse, uh, these verses have been yet fulfilled because Jerusalem has been pulled up and scattered twice since this prophecy was given unless you absolutely spiritualize these words to mean something else uh, then we have to take them uh, for what they say and we believe that Jerusalem yet has a future and there is a future millennial kingdom and notice this uh, their confession the confession of the godly Jewish remnant verse 22 for the Lord is our judge the Lord is our lawgiver the Lord is our king he will save us he will save us now as believers in Christ, uh, we know salvation now. We have a, a present possession of eternal life. We are sealed by the Spirit. We are saved now. But So this is looking to the future. The Lord is our King. He will save us. This is the people of Israel. Uh, this is what the prophet is saying by the Spirit. He will save us. Uh, and then we get some of the features of the millennium. And verse 24, And no resident will say, I am sick. And the people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. That's the people of Israel in a future day in the millennium. But for us now, beloved, beloved Christian, we know that forgiveness now. We have it now uh, through the work of the Lord Jesus, uh, through believing in him. I trust everyone who's listening to that has, has received him as their personal Lord and Savior. May the Lord bless you as we continue in our studies through Isaiah. Amen.